Hello, hello! Okay, so tonight I'm just gonna do some dailies with a uh, guy root request. Um, tossed it together yesterday. It was alright. Uh, the inspiration port came with the Singleton FNM challenge when I played a Garuda deck. A Garuda Singleton with. It was uh, basically a ramp deck that hit some Garuda and then got some even costed good stuff. Uh, it gave me the realization that I really like playing Questing Beast when my opponent is, you know, preparing to deal with Garuda because it forces them to do something to deal with him. Otherwise, it's not an all-in Garuda deck because, you know, it only really keeps going off of hitting more of himself, Sasa, or Spark Double. Uh, Spark Double gets double duty, ha ha ha, when it copies a Questing Beast because that just feels good. Um, Dream Eater is a nice stock, you know, thing you can hit with, uh, Garuda. Um, also gives you a little bit of a, you know, gives, gives you some play against the control deck, or somebody who likes to Wrath. Um, Coco's in there, uh, mostly because it's a good thing. It, you know, it's a piece of removal, um, in more ways than one. Uh, and I think it's really cute that it can uh, grab a human in its hand and have a firm purpose to protect it until end of turn. Flavor win, which not bad, not bad at all. Uh, and race four runners isn't there for the extra beatdowns. Um, I have to keep in mind when playing it. That it is not Critter Hoof Behemoth. It doesn't give other creatures haste, so hitting it with uh, Gigan is good, but it's not game shattering, usually. I mean, it being a 7 7 trampler and maybe giving my one of my little guys something to work with might uh, might be good, but we'll see. Uh, also, great non bow with Thassa, both on the vigilant side and the end of turn side. Otherwise, uh, Destiny Spinner, just a, because I'm playing best of one in the stack, which is why the sideboard doesn't matter. Um, another hedge against the uh, counterspell heavy decks. Let's me play a few more of my things in peace. Um, with her out, I only really have to worry about Migration Path and Grow Spiral resolving, and both of them won't end the world if they get countered. Um, her activated ability is, I mean, it's not what we came here for. Uh, we mostly came here because she protects the deck a little from uh, re from meta reactionaries and um, gives us a nice fat turn two body to slow down any of the uh, knights decks and mono red decks. But because I'm not playing ranked, I'm not going to be taking it too seriously tonight. Um, I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, got our ramp spells, pretty standard stuff. Uh, I'm a little, little low on the migration paths. That's fine. I just, as much as I like to play that, I'd rather play that on turn three. That's why we got four questing beasts in there. Um, also, notably, another non bow with the Thassa, but we'll take our wins when we can get them. I think I think Crossing Beast does enough work to stand alone, stand on its own. Anyway, if you're not aware of what the Geigen deck does, pause right now, read that, and figure it out. Because we all know what it does at this point if you're watching Standard. Anyway, I'm joking. Whatever. So anyway, I'm playing... I'm just playing in the... Um... Just the pre-play right now because I'm not super heavy in the mood to be playing magic. So I don't want to force my brain to, you know, have that serious mindset that honestly should be the mindset I'm in when I'm recording. But I figure I'm not really in the mood to put on uh, any YouTube on my second screen, so yeah, let's screw around. Alright, so my opponent is playing a color. 
possibly more. Bonus points if they're playing Boros Feather. Okay, well, Boris Feather is still technically a possibility. Sure. Let's see what they're bringing to the table. If they want to deal two damage to everything, they're more than allowed to. Oh, is this Mardu Aristocrats? Okay. Well, I think I'm okay. Taking a little pain. And hopefully disrupting their uh, play pattern a little. Notably, we are sacrificing a. Is it a guaranteed next turn guy again? Yeah, but. I like Questing Beast too much. I'll admit it. But yeah. Hmm. Cute. Um, I'm okay just tossing it out of this land. Yeah, sure. So... I don't think we would have really been punished for playing Gigan, but meh. <laughs> okay, so my interesting line of play here, depending on what we have for the scry, is sometimes I'll intentionally leave a land on top so that it's we're not as uh, we're not as likely to draw a thing to hit with Gigan or Gyruda, but meh. Okay, that's a lot of dudes. Here's where we get punished for not going as fast as we can for Gyruda. Yep. Hey Kenny, hey Fire Reeler. Okay. Nice. Oh, hey, Judith. So that's whenever a non-token you control dies. So... At this point, you are indestructible and attacking. I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. Alright, punished for the questing beast. So sometimes... If your opponent looks like... I don't know, it, you gotta read your opponent too at the same time, like... Yeah, that one was on me. That's that's what I'm going to leave it at. They weren't playing anything really controlling. They were playing a combo deck, so I should have comboed harder. Um, yeah. Okay, so our opponent looks to be like one where Questing Beast is the, a more amenable thing to have. Yep, Yorian. It's either a fire stack or a, a very omen heavy deck. But when you're playing that many enchantments, wow. Must be heard that I like it. Sorry, when you're playing that many cards in your deck, you can be both pretty easily. Big porcano los dos. Okay, so they may have to ferry. So I think I still want to jam my beast. I've got two beasts to jam. Oh look, it's the fairy. Imagine that. 
I don't think we're in such a good place right now, but... Oh, actually... We're doing okay then. Yeah. Now, the downside is Teferi gets to live, which means if they have a Wrath, we're kind of in trouble, but... That just means we're primed to play Migration Path or something. Oh, if they're playing something on this turn, that's a good sign. Okay. Level okay. Now, notably, we don't have an we don't have untapped lands here to go grow spiral into migration path. But oh well. It's only a matter of time. I thought he said he had time. Anyway, notably, playing the migration path before using the temple. So that way I get that sweet, sweet scry action and can appreciate it. Now, I want to hit that with Gigan or Garuda. They're interchangeable. Um, so I'm putting that at the bottom because drawing it means I have zero chance of hitting it. And this way at least I have a semblance of a chance of... Um... Well, now I know they've got Wrath. Jeez. Okay. Look at that, shuffling it back into the deck. And slightly increasing my odds of, um... Having a more, a, you know, having a, having a good hit off the Gigan. Okay, so my graveyard. Just the spark double, sure. Now my opponent notably gets to exile something. Uh, by bouncing the Elspeth Conqueror's death with the Yorian. As much as I like the Dream Eater, um, I think I go for the Thassa here. I mean, because they're spending 5 mana either way, and I don't want to give them a third use in the future, right? Yeah. Now, if I do the Gigan, I can keep going, but I lose my current Gigan. Uh, I could try hitting a questing base and still do some damage this turn before it goes away. I kind of like it, but we've only got three in the deck out of 37. So I kind of want to get a hit while I can in. Where's my browser window? Ah, uh, browser. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. Next. End turn. Bounce the OG. And we wait to hit another one anyway. Wah wah. Well, do I do the Dream Eater just so that they have to spend the mana to make it happen? I think so. If they want to wipe and save it for later, that's another issue, but we also get to surveil. So I'm going to put you in the graveyard and you in the graveyard. These guys are just fine with you on the bottom. Yeah. Do I want to bounce Elspeth Conqueror's death? I think I... I think I don't, actually. No, we will. If they want to play that instead of Yorian, otherwise... Otherwise they'll have a body and that effect. I think at this point, unless they want a Wrath, I want to eat up all their time. Or eat up all their resources. Or something like that. I'm trying to take advantage of this big push I have right here. Oh, looks like they're bringing back Uro. So I can just play Questing Beast, tap down the Uro, and kill them, pretty much?
I guess we'll put these in the bottom. It'll be more important to tap down, uh, tap down that arrow than it will be to do anything else. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If there's another land, we can go Destiny Spinner into all this. Uh, six, twelve. Yeah, I do need somebody to hit, so... This way, if they have shenaniganery. Opponent must have forgotten that ability. Okay. That match could have gone in a different direction if they had a Wrath. If they had a Wrath to play that turn, that Elspeth Conquer's death being bounced would make me feel real bad. Hey, I got a pack. I'll have to open that at some point. Preferably in the same video that I say I'm gonna open it. Uh, so anyway, that's win number one. Enjoy that. Nice little rift awaiting. So this is, uh, my not going first three games in a row. Uh, this looks like a fairly... I don't like having the end race in my hand, but... It's gonna be one of those days, huh? Like, uh, looks like the night stack. You know, it's really awkward. You're so used to clicking past that you don't realize, oh, hey, let's just save myself a couple seconds. Do it that way. So, this is gonna hurt. And it's likely going to be too quick for us. Hey, Reggie. Well, oh, pretty straightforward. That's all we can do that's meaningful. That would have made things a little bit more entertaining. Discarding the drill bit, because the thing they want to get rid of is obviously in play. So we need to get a lot of hits that aren't being drawn right here if we're gonna have a chance. And our biggest shot. Here's with Kaigen. Well, not a great start, but it's a redo. I need more than two creatures if I'm going to survive this next turn. And they might just have something that takes me out anyway. Uh, Kogla is going to be perfect, I think. As much as I want to take out that knight. This could be a clear, straight up board clear, and that's fine. Um, could go on register, do it on register. Uh, actually. I want to make sure he dies. Oh! Doesn't matter anyway. But, at least it was over quick. Okay. 
One and two, great start. Don't you just hate it when you're in a room and everybody starts yelling, I am Radicus? So, pro tip, if you want to ever go first, don't play with Gyruda in your deck or in your sideboard. Getting an awfully lot of Fable Passages for uh, there only being three in the deck. Opponent finished reading the card. I joke. I think my little delay in the Fable Passage got them uh, thinking I was going to take forever. One of these days I'm going to build a deck that a companion can accidentally fit in, so I'm going to stick it in my sideboard to just throw off the opponent in the early turns. And that'll be a best of one only deck because that's one where a first impression gimmick, you know, doesn't really work in games two and three. Chao time. So is the capitalization supposed to do where that pronunciation is supposed to go? Oh my gosh, I'm going first? I swear, Arena can hear you through your mic. Deal. If we're playing a controlly deck, well... Are we? Perhaps... The mythical Orzhov Doom Foretold deck? Ah, uh, yeah. We could get in two points of damage, but that would open her up to removal. What do I think about that? I think I would rather have my guaranteed next turn, Gyruda. Fair. So notably, we're not going to use the Fable Passage, just in case we drew a land. But now we're punished by having this many Gigans in our hand. Um, doesn't matter now. Oop, oop. Cute. I'll have to order twenty. Let's tidy up. Look at one of these guys. As much as I like playing them over and over again, gives me the option to use this or play the spinner if uh, I feel the need to. Why do I keep hitting my hit? Get my hits. Well, anyway. Here's where Forerunner's fine. Do I take out the Davriel? I'll take out the Davriel. Our contract is voided. Three mana prevent seven damage. Seems alright to me. Never mind. Prevented rest of game. No. Whatever. Okay, that's uh, three and two so far. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I was going first. We've got two things we would rather have in the deck, but we've got a piece of ramp and a lot of scrying. Notably, a lot of scrying. Sure, why not? Mm-hmm. 
It's ramp. We kind of like ramp right here. Just a little bit. Um, sure. It's ramp that's hard to interact with. Unless you like to pitch parry. Okay. Ow, my face! I just realized we still need to draw an untapped land if we're gonna get that quest of beast to work. Oh well. So could this be us for hero? Are you gonna are you gonna bounce back to my hand? Okay. Oh, you're gonna take it away from me. Well, it's a good thing I didn't have them all out right now. I don't mind taking a point of damage. That's fine. Up. Do again. Do it again. That doesn't count as doing it again. This isn't a fight you can win. Let's try this. Sure. That's cute, opponent. Let's uh, see if we can hit the Quest of Beast. <laughs> Opponent realizes their mistake. Okay. So, I wonder how many of the people that just, you know, scoop before watching Gyro to do its work um, are the same ones that are calling for the Gyruda ban. Considering how, um, how it's not really been showing up in, in the tournament scene. I don't know. Looks like we might have ourselves, uh, a Reclamation deck. I mean, it could be just as well elementals. I'm no good at predicting decks, but... I think it's more likely to see one over the other. So this opens him up to the uh, the flame sweep to take out the Paradise Druid. And I'd much rather them do that rather than do their own Grow Spiral. Of course, they would likely have done that in turn two if they had the ability to. So, you know, when I kept this hand, I didn't look at the fact that we had all this going against us. So I'm just gonna pass and hope they don't have that turn four. Reclamation? There's the flame sweep. That's fine. Sure sad on that one, though. If I had a turn for uh, Quest and Beast, they would have been punished for it. Unless they had a counter spell. They could. Because they're a Reclamation deck. Um, We're not doing much with our next turn, are we? And we're risking... Yeah, Spark Double's not so great in the hand. But... Now... I'm at a point where I need to draw... Need, need, need to draw... Um, What's your face that says my stuff can't be countered? But... I'll see. Yep. Well, this will be a quick game one way or the other. And I'm pretty sure they've got counter magic in their hand. Okay. Especially if they've been missing land drops. So... This is the price of sacrificing the land that was on top of our deck. That said, their response time on that Paradise play was pretty quick, I think. I wasn't paying that much attention to it when I should have been. So, maybe they don't play Counter Magic in here. I mean, most Reclamation decks have some number of Thassa's Intervention 
and sometimes like to play uh, Mystic Dispute. Sure. She was doing it so much currently. I was gonna say they drew enough lands last turn, or sorry, enough cards last turn to have enough lands. Okay. Here we start flashing back the chemistry's insights. From the bottom. One on the top. Doesn't bode well for us. That's probably their thoughts of intervention. So you having the handful of things you want to hit and not actually pay mana for is definitely not helping us. Wait, what? Okay. Well, all or nothing. All right, we should probably uh, <laughs> crack that. Watch the dispute happen. Oh, Sabotage. That's fine, too. I'm gonna just call it right there. They've got enough draw power and, uh, Vantress to get pretty much anything they want. So, if the first Gigan doesn't resolve when they've got three Reclamations, it's very likely that, uh, there's not gonna be another one. One, I think. I don't know. Okay, opponent's going first. We've we've gone first once so far today, and this is that's the deck that loves going first. Yes, please. That should slow them down a little bit, unless because of the fact they're going first, they ember cleave that turn. Yep. Ow! Ow! Ow. Okay. Here I'm gonna rely more on the Wolf Willow Haven because I can't trust we'll draw a fourth I'm sorry. Draw another land when I prefer not to pay life for the untapped land. I mean it works either way. Maybe drawing that much deeper was the better idea. And now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. That said, we gotta deal with the Spitfire. I do want to get more bounce in the stack so I can deal with crap like that. Um, we're pretty much dead next turn if they have a Chandra in their hand. See, again, we're paying two life for this. This is not good when... So I pay two life here. I look at the triggers. Plus three, plus zero. So I'm looking at one, two, three triggers there. That's nine, ten damage coming my way. So we're on, um... What the kids would call thin ice. So, I mean, for I've been calling get Geigen banned. I mean, look how fast the format is. It's hard to get up to six. Now, I could have had a guaranteed six next turn. Which, honestly, seeing what I'm up against right here, is probably the right play. But my opponent is trying to go for a big finish rather than putting their guy at risk. But, that said, we don't really have a way to take advantage of that. So, uh, I think we're just dead here. So, there's the power of somebody who can empty out their hand much faster than their opponent. So that puts us at what, three losses? I, I'm horrible about keeping track, apparently. Four, I forget. We lost to... 
Reclamation, we lost to that. Uh, the mono red deck, what was the first one we lost to? Ah, Knights. Yeah, it's three losses, I think. My gosh, we're going first? Doesn't happen much. Uh, we'd rather hit her, so she goes in the deck. Opponent is getting the, uh, the impatience advantage of doing the Fable Passage now. Puts out the traditionally impatient land. So if we don't have another land, we may be, may be hurting a little. Oh, the cycling deck. <laughs> as I, I laughed to myself as I realized I'm in danger. So that's number five, that's number six, so I am definitely cracking the Fable Passage. So they get a 1-1 human soldier creature, which is great for blocking the likes of Gigan. Especially if their Boros Bicycle deck is just loaded with 1-mana discards. That'll punish us soon enough. See, the trouble with being too busy ramping is it's hard to play this guy to have her uh, deal with the likes of the swings. So now we could say no to guaranteed Gigan, but get rid of uh, one of their main engine pieces. I think I'm down for that, actually. Now we have to draw that land, and it has to be untapped if we want Gigan next turn. But this guy's going to get eternally chumped otherwise. And I don't think opponent planned for that since they didn't cycle in response. Now we're not going to crack that because we hit the fourth land, we're good to go anyway. And I wouldn't be surprised if the opponent scoops as soon as they realize that before we even finish our Fabled Passage. That said, I expected to get one resolution down before they put the math together. So. Hey! My first Atris and my actual first Atris. Good. Alright, I said I'd open that pack, so I'm going to open up that pack. Uh, before I do, though, I'm going to increase my likelihood of forgetting to open up the pack by looking back at Garuda. Okay, so, very much a combo deck. Hit six mana, maybe win the game, probably win the game. Watch your opponent scoop before he even hits the battlefield, thus denying themselves the risk of you whiffing and uh, just... Falling on your feet. So, I like Questing Beast because it gives me another thing that I can cast before the Garuda, uh, but can also have that hasty value. Good for taking out the Planeswalkers, as we saw. Um, just adds a little pressure before the 6-6 comes down. I love this inclusion. I'm not sure if I'm in love with the deck as a whole. Um, because it's always clunky when you have your, you know, expensive things in your opening hand and can't do much with them, or you draw them shortly after keeping your opening hand. Uh, see? Actual, actual first. Yay, I do like Atrus. That, that is a very fun fact of fiction mechanic. Um, so we got to see, we got to see some Crossing Beast action here. Destiny Spinner, we didn't get to see it do too much this time around, mostly because the matches we saw... We're not putting up enough pressure for me to immediately just slap it down. Um, I'm not sure if I handled the mono red deck as right, right as I should. I forget that situation. Um, this is only my second set of games I played with the deck, so I'm bound to make misplays. Uh, I know our first loss was definitely one where I identified things I sh could have been doing better. Um, 
I'm still not crazy about Migration Path, but it is a good turn 3 way to make sure Guy Ruder comes out turn 4. Because if you can cast it on turn 3, it guarantees it. Um, maybe it's worth bumping it up a little more, I'm not sure. Again, the other 4 drops that aren't questing based we do not want to hit early on in the game. Like, we can hit Tasa, that's okay. But Spark Double is just laughable when, you know, it can only copy a Mana Dork or the Destiny Spinner. Um, I guess it's a 3-4. It shuts down Mono Red to the extent where you're not afraid of them shocking it afterwards, as usually. But still, if you're doing that, you're not in the best place. I like Dream Eater. Dream Eater. I wish there was a bounce creature that cost less that I could hit with it instead, but then and that would probably lose the flash value. And I do like having the flash against the proper decks that do stuff with that. I've only got one Code Law. I'm okay with only having one Code Law. He was fun. Um, and raise four runner, runner. That's a four runner. Um, it's secondary effect is very hit or miss when it's coming to play the same turn. I might actually consider cutting him for another creature when Questing Beast is kind of filling in his, you know, swing off the bat roll. Um, yeah, I mean, Questing Beast doesn't have Trample, but it's difficulty in jumping. Um, should definitely help out the, uh, help make up for the lack of Trample. Maybe. Um... This is what my second build of the deck. My first one was literally the exact same thing, except I had a two Destiny Spinners and one Fiddle Tip. I think that's all the changes I made to it currently. Um, besides messing with the land art, because some people care about that, myself included, because I care about it, hence why I'm talking about it. But anyway, I'm sure it needs work. Um, but it is a thing that exists, and I was able to do my dailies in like 40 minutes, including deck explanations. So, uh, that's that. Let's get to that pack. So close to another mythic wild card. Uh, so, Chittering Harvester. Oh yeah, that was in one of the, uh, the, the f &M event, or whatever. The mutate deck it was annoying. So naturally, after I blow um, blow wild card to get my fourth one of these, um, that's when I open up my fourth one. Yeah, that's fine. All right, what do we got here? All strings revenge. I love the art and the flavor text on it. That said, I mean, it's an okay card. It's just standard is too fast for it right now. Once rotation happens, I think that'll be on my docket for first things to build. Um, one thing to note here is that it doesn't care if the red, white, or black creature card in your graveyard was ever on the battlefield, so... <sighs> you could make some interesting deck choices with that, but... Maybe the uh, next set will have uh, some fun aristocrats potential with it, since we're going to lose a lot of aristocrat pieces. Maybe. Okay. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching. And take care out there.